What's happening everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Adam, this is Van City Audi and welcome back to my Mark 8 GTI tuner battle. In this video, you're gonna see stage one, low torque, 93 octane tunes from five different companies. We have 034 Motorsport, APR, Unitronic, United Motorsport, as well as Tunezilla. There are three companies that I asked to participate that did not join in on this tuner battle. Rather than me going through them all right now, if you'd like to check out a video that I've already done when I announced this tuner battle. I'll put the link in the description below and it goes over all the reasons why they did not participate. On each of these videos, I go through a very lengthy disclaimer portion explaining all the details on how this testing works and I'll get into that right now. Buckle up kids, it's time to learn a thing or two. Disclaimer number one, all dynos read differently. That's why if you go to each of these different companies' websites, every single reading on all of their dynos on a Mark 8 GTI, all of their stock power levels are different. They vary over 30 wheel horsepower. I think it's 37 to be exact from the lowest to the highest reading. So just know that there are a ton of variables that come into play when looking at power generated on a dyno. The weather conditions, the elevation, the quality of fuel, the dyno brand, the calibration done on the dyno, so many different things. So just know that the power that we're generating today on this dyno might not be the same as everybody else's dyno figures at your particular dyno, wherever you may live. You also need to take into account some dynos read power at the wheels, other dynos read power at the crank or brake horsepower. Those are not the same thing. Wheel horsepower does not take into effect the drivetrain loss that you're suffering. So when you have a crank horsepower or a brake horsepower readout on a dyno, they've added in your drivetrain loss. The dynos that I use in my videos read wheel horsepower. Disclaimer number two, I cannot control the environmental conditions that we are testing in. I'll do the best that I possibly can to get through this testing from one tune to the next to the next. So not too much time takes place between those runs because if I wait too long and the temperatures get much higher, that means that it'll probably be at a disadvantage for those tunes that I'm testing later in the day. On some days we may get extremely lucky where the temperature and the density altitude doesn't vary very much between the day. But other days, you might start out at a very cold temperature, warming up throughout the day to a much warmer temperature. The tunes that you test in the morning might have an advantage over the tunes you test later in the day, simply due to those environmental conditions changing. Disclaimer number three, this is simply a dyno test and nothing more. This does not account for drivability, smoothness, refinement, nothing. It is simply a fourth gear pull at wide open throttle from anywhere between 2,000 to 2,500 RPM all the way to red line. That's all you're really experiencing on the dyno, nothing else. Disclaimer number four, I cannot be certain of the software that is being provided to me by any of these companies. You should know that APR, Unitronic, and 034 Motorsport all only offer canned or off-the-shelf software, whereas Toonzilla and United Motorsport do offer custom software. But I have specifically requested to only get off-the-shelf or canned tunes from each of these companies. Disclaimer number five, I am running all OEM hardware. It's safe to say and safe to assume if I was then to install some aftermarket performance hardware, my car would make more power on each of these tunes. But just know that right now I am completely stock performance hardware. The only things I have installed on the car are cosmetic or things that make a bit of noise like the CTS turbo muffler delete as well as their blow off valve. Number six, my TCU is locked. I am sorry to say that at this present time, my 2023 Volkswagen GTI still has a locked TCU, meaning that there is a torque limitation set by the manufacturer that I cannot surpass. With that being said, I'm unable to see whether the tunes that are provided to me are going to be riding that torque limit or whether they're gonna be set at a safer, lower torque limit and possibly give me a flatter torque curve. I'm not exactly sure the limitations on this transmission with it being locked, but all I know is there is the possibility that some companies are riding that torque limitation, maybe it's gonna be up and down a bit, and other ones may have played it a bit safer on the low torque tunes and flatten that out at a lower level. Number seven is that I will try my best to let the data speak for itself. Now I could go out in the back roads of Mexico and give you subjective information, being how well the car drives, how refined it feels, but that's coming from my opinion. In these videos, I'll try my best to just let the data speak for itself. What we see in terms of power and torque on the dyno running 
running each of these different tunes. Number eight, the AFR or air to fuel ratio or lambda in each of these tunes may vary. Keep in mind that the leaner something might be in terms of AFR or lambda, it might make more power, but it might also affect the longevity of the motor itself. Whereas if a software company has decided to tune something on the richer side, the longevity of the motor might last a little longer. I'm not going to be sharing those or going over those in this video series. And number nine, I will not be sharing any of the data logs that I capture on my Mark 8 during this entire process with the public. The reason being is each of these companies spent a ton of time, money, and energy, all creating their own version of the spicy sauce that they're using to make the GTI work as well as it does on each of their software. I don't think it's fair, and quite honestly, it would be disrespectful of me to put that out into the public. If you do want to know each of the logs, I highly suggest you purchase each of the company's software and test them for yourself. Now that you guys know all of those disclaimers, I'm going to get into how we're doing this testing. We are going to give each of these software, including a stock calibration, three runs on the dyno. We're gonna give two back-to-back -back runs and see what it can do. Then we're gonna give it a five to 10 minute cooling period where we let that engine cool down to make sure the intake air temps are not soaring. And then we're gonna give it a third run. The best out of those three runs is what we're going to use for the comparison. For this video series, we're gonna be using an all-wheel drive Mustang dyno here at Racing Greed. We're showing uncorrected numbers. We're using a smoothing level of six on these dyno results. Although it's a Mustang dyno, we are going to be using a dyno jet calibration. That's because this Mustang dyno is a heartbreaker and it reads very, very low. What we found in the past is the dyno jet calibration here resembles APR's stock Mark 8 GTI results on their dyno as well. Now, although these cars are tuned to run optimally on 87 octane fuel from the factory, I do have 93 Shell V-Power Nitro Plus in the gas tank. Fresh just picked it up yesterday and we know it is going to run extremely well on these tunes because I've already done a fuel comparison using this fuel versus all of the other 93 and 94 octane fuels in the lower mainland where I live and Shell did come out on top. Another cool point is I will now demonstrate how a Mark 8 GTI does not make a lick of a horsepower difference running 93 octane versus the 87 octane in which the car was tuned on. I've already made an entire video on this, but I'm going to prove it to you right now. Let's get this tuner battle underway for part two, stage one, low torque, 93 octane tunes with a stock run. Here it is, stock 93 power figures, 242 wheel horsepower, 298 wheel torque. Graph looks identical to last time. You get this crazy hit of torque at 2,400 RPM, and then it flatlines to about 4,400, and the torque just falls off. Your horsepower flattens out at about 4,400 RPM all the way to red line. It's time for a little bit of bonus info. And now a little extra piece of information from all of you. When I discuss the fuel we're using, this is a comparison of the dyno results, 93 octane today versus 87 octane previously. Look at that guys, who would have thunk it? The exact same freaking wheel horsepower. It doesn't matter what kind of fuel you use when the car's stock. Now the torque did make a difference, but we only see that at 2,400 RPM, this crazy high peak, and then it narrows out and makes the exact same horsepower and the exact same torque the entire rest of the way. Gonna quickly go over how to read a dyno graph for those that didn't watch the first video or have never watched these videos before. Definitely look at the torque. You wanna see a flat torque curve and you wanna see the horsepower climbing all the way to red line. That is a really good looking graph. But in terms of what we're gonna see today, I want you guys to recognize this peak wheel horsepower and this peak wheel torque only represent one specific spot in the entire graph. This is the highest spot that we saw for the wheel horsepower. So only that tiny little spot is represented by that peak horsepower number. The peak torque number is only represented by this tiny little spot here at 2400 RPM. You don't see that the rest of the run. These numbers only correspond to the peak numbers. 
All right, guys, now that we've seen what the stock numbers are, we're gonna tune the car. I'm using the most scientific method possible again. I'm reusing these from the first video where I have printed out a logo of each of the companies. I'm gonna be folding them up and putting them in my bag so I can't see them. There's no differences. They're all just plain pieces of paper. I'll pull them out one by one and that'll dictate the order that we're gonna be tuning the car in today. All right, guys, we got my handy dandy bag. I'm gonna be shaking the crap out of these things so I don't know what's what. Let's go for the first one today. We have... APR, APR is the first tune we're gonna try out on the car today. All right, first three runs done. APR software made 81 wheel horsepower and 43 wheel torque over stock. Let's take a look at the graph. As you can see here, for some reason, it pretty much mimics what we see on the stock tune in terms of torque. Nice and flat, but it does have a little bit of a dip. Whereas the wheel horsepower, good gracious, looks a lot nicer, really linear. Power hits peak at about 5,700 RPM. If you love all the hard work I put into making these videos and you really enjoy what APR is putting down, check out the link in the description below. Use that for all of your APR hardware and software purchases. APR is done. Let's find out what tune number two is gonna be. We have 034 Motorsport. 034 Motorsport going number two. Zero three four runs are completed. They made 85 wheel horsepower over stock and 41 wheel torque over stock. They made more horsepower than APR, but less wheel torque. But look at this graph. Again, repeating with an extremely flat, wonderful looking torque curve and their power, nice, smooth, and a linear. Their peak power hits at about 5,300 RPM and their torque just holds strong all the way up to about 5,000 RPM. Really impressive stuff. All right, two down, third one's up. Who's gonna be next? We have Unitronic. Unitronic's going number three. Three runs done for Unitronic, we managed to gain 79 wheel horsepower and 94 wheel torque over stock. That's over double the torque we made with the other two tunes. But let's take a look at the graph and see how they compare. The torque isn't as flat as the other two tunes. It is a little bit wavy, but it is significantly higher. As for the horsepower, a nice, clean, linear pull, but it definitely flattens out from about 40, what is that, 4,400 RPM all the way to red line. All right, only two more to go, guys. Who is it gonna be? Who the hell are they? There they are. We have Toonzilla, it looks like. Yep, Toonzilla. Toonzilla, going number four. Toonzilla's three runs are done. They managed 86 wheel horsepower and 91 wheel torque over stock. That is just barely higher than 034 in terms of horsepower and just shy of what Unitronic made for wheel torque. Let's take a look at the graph. In terms of what we saw for the torque, there is some definite up and downs. I think it is a little later in torque delivery than we saw in Unitronic, but I'm not 100% sure. We might see that in the comparison later. In terms of wheel horsepower, this thing just climbs and climbs and climbs. A very linear smooth looking pull in terms of horsepower. If you guys really appreciate all the hard work I put into these videos and you want to support the channel and you really like what Toonzilla has done, go to Toonzilla.com, use promo code VanCityAudi and save yourself 15%. 
And then I don't need to shake it anymore. We only have one left. It is United Motorsports. Going fifth and final. Let's see how they do. All right, guys, now the weirdest thing about this last set of runs with United Motorsport is I did not change the software. When I asked for a stage one 93 octane low torque file from him, he said off the get-go, you asked for a stage one off the shelf tune and that's what you got. So this is the exact same tune that I ran running 91 octane. This time around, I'm running 93 octane and what did we see? Holy moly, the highest horsepower of the day, 90 wheel horsepower and 71 wheel torque, which kind of puts them right in the middle for the torque. Let's take a look the graph. In terms of the wheel torque, it is very nice and smooth. Down here, a little up and down with the onset of the torque, but once you get higher up in the RPMs at about 4,500 RPM is where it starts to fall off, but quite smooth. In terms of the horsepower, again, butter smooth, looks awesome, looks great. This time we didn't have as many up and down runs as we did last time. It did look smoother thanks to the higher octane. All right, guys, the highest wheel horsepower of the day. Let's take a look and see what we see. Number one being United Motorsport, number two being Toonzilla, number three being 034 Motorsport. Now, if you guys take a look at the graph, what you're gonna see is at about 5,200 RPM, all three of the tunes are very, very close to one another. But previous to that, they're significantly different. The smooth line is United Motorsport, right in the middle, but then at about 4,500 RPM, Toonzilla and United Motorsport match up and fall off together. Whereas 034 has a very, very flat torque line, but significantly lower. In terms of the horsepower, we see that 034 is significantly lower again in terms of horsepower, but when we get up top, it matches up. In terms of the low end, we see Toonzilla being the highest, putting in the most work, and United Motorsport being right in the middle. Some very, very cool comparisons for the highest wheel horsepower of the day. All right, guys, now in terms of what we saw for the highest wheel torque levels, number one being Unitronic, number two being Toonzilla, and number three being United Motorsport. Let's take a look at the graph so we see how they made that torque. The solid line being Unitronic, it is quite wavy, but it did peak the highest at about 3,400 RPM. Then we have Toonzilla that is almost identical to that one, and then underneath those by a bit is United Motorsport. But what you notice is about at 4,400 RPM, they all kind of meet up and then fall off. The one that is a bit lower than the other two, that is Unitronic, which falls off just a little bit in comparison to Toonzilla at United Motorsports. And then in terms of wheel horsepower, what you see is although United Motorsport did make the most horsepower up top, down low, we see Unitronic making more than them. We also see Toonzilla making more than them. So down low, more wheel horsepower by Unitronic and Toonzilla, but up top, just ever so slightly, we get that peak from United Motorsport making more horsepower than both of them. Holy moly, another one in the bag. Stage one, low torque, 93 octane tunes here on my Mark 8 GTI. Some pretty cool data, a lot of numbers for you guys to really soak in. But at the end of the day, what does that data really mean? To me, it's more about drivability, how refined it feels on the roads. And if you guys pay attention, in the next couple weeks, I will be dropping my subjective video on how these tunes feel to drive on the streets, giving it some gas, rolling on the freeway, all the above. I give you guys gas mileage, I'll give you guys my impressions, onset of boost, how the torque feels down low, everything. I will do my best subjectively to tell you how I think these tunes feel, rather than just giving you dyno numbers. Thank you all so very, very much for watching. Thank you to Marcus from Roads Untraveled for helping me film this video again. Take care, guys.